So today I want to talk about spirit, taboo, myth, and ritual. These are things we've, we've touched on briefly in class, or we may have, uh, depending on what I've already talked about. But um, I want to kind of just lump these together. And, and like many of the lectures that we do uh, in this class, um, this is primarily about terms. We want to get the definitions down so that we can communicate um, successfully by all being on the same page. So let's get started. So let's talk about the idea of uh, human beings having a spirit. Most, if not all, cultures have this idea that one of the things that separates humans from other animals is either a soul or a spirit. And it's called different things in different languages. Again, it's, it's primarily, we're talking about translation here, not that they're different things, but they are different Different languages use different terms for the same thing. So in Christianity, it may be called a soul. Um, in uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, the, the soul may be, may be coming around and be re-embodied, whether either into another human soul or into another animal or a vegetable or a mineral. Um, the uh, different, different communities have different concepts for it. Sometimes there's a difference between the spirit and the soul. Other times uh, they're viewed as uh, very, very similar. The uh, some societies, in, and especially in, in Melanesia, Polynesia, places like that, a lot of the Asias, um, there's this notion of of mana, and mana or mana, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is a supernatural force. Again, this comes back to uh, animism, where there are these impersonal supernatural forces that exist in the universe that can um, uh, uh, impact. Uh, your daily life, and you can uh, actually influence them. Again, this is this is the application of, of magic, is that you can get these spirits to do things either for you or against other people on your behalf, or give you good fortune, or fall, have somebody fall in love with you, or, or whatever. And so, uh, all of this stuff can be done by um, taking certain, doing certain rituals or other certain certain actions. Um, you can also um, uh, you can borrow power from other people, and so mana is kind of like uh, electricity. It, if it's used properly, it's fine. If it's misused, people in in, in societies that that have this common belief um, believe that misusing it is 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 bad, and so um, it, it, it's discouraged and frowned upon. Taboo is. Um, originally comes out of the the bad use of man and now it's really used for uh, any um, anything that is forbidden um, you know I, I just put the game up here because it's a, a great graphic but but basically taboo is something that is forbidden we've talked about or we should have talked about um, incest taboos and other taboos when it comes to um, uh, kinship and things like that We often refer to myths and rituals, and myths have the uh, distinction of often being conceived uh, or pre perceived as being um, uh, uh, fantasy. Um, that you know that that my religion tells what happened, and your religion tells myths, or or vice versa. But it is it is a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, most uh, uh, myths and the associated rituals, or or any acting out that goes associated with that myth, um, they started out almost ex almost uh, universally as oral traditions. Uh, eventually, they'll be written down. Some of the big ones, of course, are are the mythology of the Bible. The entire uh, Torah and much of the rest of it is is uh, very fantastical with giants and all kinds of stuff. Um, the great battles. Um, the uh, Homer, of course, uh, we the Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, two completely different uh, documents in style and presentation. One's prose, one's poetry. Um, they they have almost nothing in common in the way that they're written, and yet we we don't even know that there was a person named Homer, but we we attribute these two works to uh, to him, and um, they basically are really recordings of, of of a mythical history, parts of which are true, parts of which are are made up stories. The Vedic traditions, the Upanishads, and the Vedas, and things like that. These are all again myths that start out as oral 
uh, uh, presentations and then end up being written down and, and codified and and so a lot of the misconceptions of religion today are based on the fact that in many cases um, you know the the writings were written down so many years after the religion was actually started that it's uh, who knows what the understanding is whether it's accurate or, or not Ritual is a term we use for basically religion in action, and that's something that an, an individual or that a community does um, to communicate with the spiritual world, to mark rites of passage, rites of intensification. We've talked about these before. Rites of passage, of course, those stages of life. In, in Christianity, it would be uh, baptism and uh, conf uh, a confirmation, I think it's called. And then um, there may be a, a coming out or a quinceanera or something at, at, when, uh, at, at, at maturity. Uh, and then um, other rituals down the road, marriage, funerals, all of those are, are part of that, those rites of, of passage. Um, within the rites of intensification, those are usually uh, either um, things like Passover is a rite of intensification because it marks a uh, uh, something that had happened in the, in the past and, and they, they reenact it. So um, rites of intensification can also have to do with seasons and things like that as well. Rites of passage are those rituals that move you from one status to another. And so it's things like uh, bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, uh, quinceaneras, um, all kinds of different traditions in different religions that have a lot to do with um, uh, moving from one stage to another. Rites of separation, uh, these tend to be very often um, uh, aimed at, at women. Uh, it could be during uh, women during their period. It could be while women are giving birth. Um, it could be um, uh, uh, separation for a spiritual journey and then come back. Uh, it could be before the coming of age. The young man would go off, do several tasks, and then come back. Um, it has a lot to do with, with social positions and where you are and and the leaving is often followed by a ritual that is bringing you back into the community but as a new person you might have a new name you might be part of a new family you might be uh, uh, you know there are lots of you might you might even be considered a different gender there are all kinds of of these reincorporation uh, uh, um, rituals that are associated with the rite of separation Rites of passage, like I said, this structure applies in many, many cultures. It's usually that passage from childhood to adulthood. Um, uh, there are some that is not clearly defined, others very, very um, uh, stringent. The Balinese, for example, you have to go through several stages before you can get it. Um, we have debutante balls, we have quinceanera, we have uh, things like that. We have graduations, initiations into clubs, um, hazing for uh, sororities and fraternities, those types of things. Uh, some um, communities observe very traditional rites. Very often they import them from their cultural homeland, oftentimes outliving the same practices in the homelands. Often immigrants will maintain some of these rituals and rites long after they are, are no longer seen as important in the host culture. Rites of intensification are those ceremonies that reaffirm who we are as a people. Um, so uh, funerals can be very, very elaborate and they're, they're part of redefining who we are. Um, a cremation ceremony where the, the fire releases the spirit almost immediately. This goes back to the, Ro the Romans felt this, uh, the Balinese felt this, that the reason for cremation was to uh, not let the spirit linger and, and dwindle its way out as, as the body de uh, decomposes, but burn it, get it up quickly, the smoke takes that and takes it out to uh, wherever it's going to go. Um, often, some places will do things like um, bury people and then when they have a bunch they'll get them together and cremate them. Um, really, rites of intensification are, are basically major religious ceremonies, uh, you know, Christmas Mass, uh, uh, Easter Mass, Passover, those types of things. Um, they are, are, are are parts of the refocusing of a community, uh, usually on an annual basis. And that pretty much wraps up in as quickly and succinctly as I can do, spirit, taboo, myths, 
uh, and rituals.